hello and welcome to today's video today i'm going to take you through the process video of making this very cute name board which i made for a kid's room so join me in today's video and i hope you have a wonderful time and you get inspired to make something this cute so i'm basically using an mdf board which i picked out on amazon i will leave the link in the description box below so it comes with the holes for you to put a thread through so it is absolutely perfect to start off with I've chosen the theme of cartoon dinosaurs for this one. The first step is to draw out your ideas on a sketchbook and then create it on a board. Otherwise, there would be a lot of mistakes, there would be strike offs and you will require to erase it and it'll just get very dirty. So once the drawing is done, it becomes super easy and you get an idea also when you create it on your sketchbook in terms of the composition. So this is exactly what I did. I first used a sketchbook I created these mock uh, tiny rectangular boards and then I made these um, compositions and then when I was happy with it I drew it directly on top of the MDF board. To start off I started painting the background for which I have used burnt sienna or a brown and I've also used a little bit of white. So I mixed both of these to create two shades of brown and I wanted to create like a wooden texture in the background. So you can also first paint the entire background and then on draw on top of it but i prefer to draw and then do the background painting so i'll tell you the reason why i do this if you do the background painting first then you will have to draw on top of it either with a pencil or with a color pencil or with a chalk so sometimes if you're not very perfect in your drawing if you're a person who draws multiple lines to get the perfect shape then you will end up with getting a lot of pencil marks or chalk marks at the end which will become a little shabby to look at so this is why i prefer to draw first so when i paint acrylics over it even if there is a pencil mark since it is acrylics it will hide it completely now it's okay if you are a beginner that um, you take your time for it you do the background first and then draw it out a little slowly so in this case what you do is draw a little lightly don't put a lot of pressure on your pencil otherwise it will become too dark and then it's very hard to erase it after that you can also use chalk there are a lot of chalks available which are um, dust free and they also get like wiped out or at least they say that they get wiped out i haven't uh, found one which is completely 100% um, wiped out every time so that's why i prefer to draw with the pencil first and then i go about doing the background color and now i am filling in the foreground color of every individual piece which is out there normally acrylics is a medium which dries glossy but in this case i noticed that it is drying with a matte finish maybe this has something to do with the mdf board but i'm very happy with the matte finish it gives the effect of using chalk paints without actually having to use chalk paints so if you are somebody who is new to chalk paints or to basically doing diy boards um so there is another art supply called as chalk paints it's another medium so that is used for doing a lot of furniture painting a lot of painting on different kinds of objects so that um, retains on top of the um, product really well and it also has a matte finish so it's pretty versatile it's easier to paint with chalk paints as compared to acrylics and um, it is something which comes with a lot of beautiful colors now the difference is chalk paints are always a little bit more expensive and um, hence a lot of people prefer uh, to not use them if they are going to be doing like small things like this name board i think um, is perfect i would have preferred to use chalk paint but when i noticed that um, the final finish was coming out pretty nicely with acrylics i decided to just stick with it so if you're starting out i would still suggest you to start off with acrylics if you already have a small um, case with you or if you're somebody who wants to have a really good finish and wants to experience then you could get these really tiny chalk paints which are available so don't get something always you know which is a lot of ml like don't go for a 250 ml or a 500 ml bottle go for like smaller ones so that you can experience the medium figure out if you like it and then decide if you would like to invest into it so some of the colors may require a second coat so in this case Please wait for the first layer to completely dry and then add in the second layer on top of that once it's dried and you will notice that the colors stand out much brighter. Today's name board is a bit of a gamble for me in terms of the colors because I haven't done a thumbnail of the colors to test out if the composition of colors work well with each other. So I'm directly trying it out on the board and I'm going to find out 
during the process whether this works or it doesn't work. The plan is to finish painting the details on one side and I will add the outline with black paint and then only I will move on to the other side. I didn't want to do the same text or design on both sides and that's why um, it gives me a lot of room to experiment and opportunity to add in more details which is very close to the person. So first side I am starting out with writing the name of the kid. The paints that I'm using is Camilla Artistic Acrylic Colors. I wouldn't recommend you to use watercolors or gouache or even poster colors because all of these would wash away and they would not be permanent. Acrylics is a permanent medium. It's also very fast dry. So it's one of the best to use for DIY. Chalk paints are also similar in terms of properties like that's also very quick dry and it works perfect on MDF. Uh, so the only difference is of course the pricing. So that's something that you can look out for. You can also use alcohol markers to do the entire artwork. Basically, the idea is to use any art supply which is permanent. So that property is very important. So if you're going to go to the art store and pick out something to do a DIY like this, then pick out something which is a permanent paint or permanent ink which is there. So while choosing the colors, um, it was a bit of a gamble, like I said earlier. So the only thing I was very clear about is the background of my particular um, board, which I wanted the effect of a wooden uh, piece. So I did that first and uh, I chose a color which will help to stand out on top of it. So I chose a nice color of a blue, which is uh, complementary to um, the brown. So that stands out a little bit. And after that, I didn't want any color which is going to um, remove the attention too much from the name. So I chose the colors from the same side of the color wheel, which is I chose a lot of cool colors like the greens and the purples. So to enhance that a little bit, because the hooves of the dinosaur at the top and uh, the texture on the body, I thought, OK, let me go with the other side of the color wheel, which is the warm colors. So if you're somebody very new to the color wheel, don't worry about this. Just take your chance with colors, play around with them, try different combinations, and then you will find out what works with each other. And it completely depends on your style. Every artist has their own style. And only when you start experimenting and making all of this, you will understand what colors work in your style and what colors don't work for you. I'm using now a um, Bristro very thin brush. These were uh, the miniature series of uh, Prustro and it is so good to do an outline with it. So I didn't want a very thin outline. I wanted something which is more like a cartoony outline. So if you see that some of my lines are thick, some of my lines are thin. So I wanted to give that very beautiful organic flow to it. So that's why I decided to use a brush and not really an alcohol marker to do this. Um, worst thing is I kind of don't like the smell of the permanent markers and I somehow feel like it's not 100% jet black. It becomes a little lighter when it dries. It's almost like it's 90 or 80% black and I kind of feel like it looks a little incomplete if I use that. I feel like the colors are working so well with each other. I'm so glad that I experimented uh, with these colors and I decided to stick to one side of the color wheel to do that. And I'm really happy with how the outcome of this side of my board is. I hope you also like this side. I'm going to now wait for this to dry and then I will flip it over to the other side and then we will do the process of coloring the entire thing. So now on the other side, I have written, I love books. So this is basically um, something that has to do with the kid. So I want it to be very personalized and um, the kid that I'm doing this for is my nephew and he's about two and a half years old and he loves books. So I really wanted to gift him something that um, defines this particular age of his. He may not understand what this is yet, but uh, his parents and at least I know this phase of his life and uh, it is something like a very beautiful memory that's going to be there for me. So that's why I decided to make sure that I put something a little personalized on the other side. So in this, I decided to paint the dinosaur first. And since I didn't want the same text of uh, color, which I use for the name, I decided to use that color for the dinosaur. So I wanted some kind of cohesiveness. I didn't want a completely different style on the backside. So that's why I chose the colors from the front over here. So in the front, we have used the green for the dinosaur. So I used that for the text over here. Some colors will require multiple coats like this green one over here. 
one reason is the consistency of the colors which are used and the other in this specific case is the fact that i have painted over a lot of the pencil marks so you will notice that um, before i had written or painted the books a lot of the letters were not seen fully so i used the paint to create the outline of each of these letters and then i filled it in so wherever it overlapped with the brown i required more coats of green to do that to fill in that and to make sure that the bottom layer is not seen and this is a very common and normal thing which happens in painting over mdf boards or even you know if you're going to be doing it on um, any other canvas or something else which is there so now one way to avoid this is you can use gesso first as a base layer um, so your colors will not get soaked into the mdf um, so that also is another thing that you can do but if it's only if you're going to be doing like a huge piece or if you feel that you want to do those additional steps as well now here also um, i did not want to put gesso i normally do like to put it but in this case i just decided to go ahead and paint it in my own style and just have fun with it so that's exactly what i uh, sat down on my studio um, while doing this so i think it's come out really well i love the colors and when i'm doing the outline i can see how everything is coming to life and there is a lot of cohesiveness with the front and the back there is no front or back specifically either place either one can be used as a front or the back but i can see how they uh, are going really well with each other because of the colors which are used i didn't use too much of contrast i made sure that i stick with one side of the family which is the cool colors and i use a little bit of warm colors to add some highlights so i'm really loving uh, the final effect of it I like adding those tiny details like inside the book those small lines and um, the smile for the dinosaur the eyes and all these tiny details make up a lot of um, it, it adds value I think to your uh, composition and I love how it's coming out I hope uh, you are enjoying this video and it inspires you to also pick up your paints and draw something and create something very cute so and if you're new over here don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video don't forget to like it share it and leave a little comment also below to let me know how you're liking all the videos that i'm putting up and if you would want to see something very specific as well so you can also add varnish at the end if you want to um, i am not adding in this because i like the finish of it and uh, there are two types of varnishes one is a glossy and one is a matte finish but since it is acrylics i know that nothing is really going to happen to it and uh, there's not going to be any water that is going to be thrown on top of this so i didn't use varnish but i love how this has come out and i'm so happy and very excited to gift it to my nephew thank you so much for joining me in today's video see you soon for the next one bye bye